A magneto-optical disk is an information carrier that combines the characteristics of optical and magnetic data storage. The device was invented in the beginning of the 80s. The magneto-optical disk is made with the help of ferromagnets. The size of the disks was that of a 5.24-inch floppy disk. It later decreased to 3.5-inch. The data is recorded on the magneto-optical disk according to the following technology. The radiation of the laser heats up the section of the track to a temperature above Curie point. Then electromagnetic pulse is used to automate ionization and create impressions equivalent to the pits on optical disks. The data is read with the help of the same laser, but at a lower power that is insufficient to heat up the disk. A polarized laser beam passes through a disk material, is reflected off the substrate, passes through the optical system and falls onto a photo sensor. The plane of polarization of the beam changes depending on magnetization, which is determined by the sensor. When in the beginning of 1992 a new data carrier, magneto-optical mini-disc, first appeared in the market, Sony advertised it as an alternative to combat cassettes that lost their popularity by that time. The format of the many disks enables storage and multiple recording of any digital data. Besides, the small device can be conveniently carried in the pocket, while its volume of several gigabytes makes them by far one of the best solutions. When inserted into a computer, a magneto-optical disk interacts with operating system as a hard drive, which is what can be formatted into any standard file system. The other advantages of the device include efficient protection against mechanical damage and magnetic fields, up to 10 million recording erasing cycles, and a guaranteed recording quality. However, there is also a number of minuses, like a relatively low recording speed, conditioned by the need to erase the components before burning and to verify after the burning is complete, high pricing of both the disks and the storage, and finally, lack of a single standard for the device and storage. Needless to say that all these drawbacks were exactly the reason why the invention didn't take root.